old fashioned, Yanni Tsen becomes the youngest woman ever to win four major championships. Winner, trailblazer, icon. Yanni Tseng's time to burn bright. With 15 titles, including five majors across four years, her achievements may never be matched. By the age of 23, she looked destined for greatness. So the fact it went horribly wrong makes it all the more shocking. And she just looks like a totally different player, Yanni Tseng. Everything about her body language, about her game, just looks like she has no self-confidence, no self-belief. This is the story of Yanni Tseng. After a trophy-laden amateur career, Sang turned pro in 2007, aged 18, and continued her winning ways on the LPGA Tour. She collected three titles before her major debut at the 2008 McDonald's LPGA Championship. The buildup was dominated by an old story, Lorena Ochoa's consistent brilliance. The Mexican was looking to win her third major in a row and expecting a challenge from another all-time great, Annika Sorenstam. What nobody anticipated was a newcomer from Taiwan to make her mark. This 19 year old hasn't played like a teenager. A round of 68 for the rookie. After a slow start, her impressive weekend saw the teenager reel in the big names, setting up a playoff against Sweden's Maria Hjorth. And now Yanni. Give this one a good look. Sang had yet to lose in a playoff, and her birdie putt on the fourth extra hole ensured that run continued. Yanni Sang, a 19-year-old rookie and Taiwan's first ever major champion. Yanni Sang, her first win is a major championship. <laughs> mean to you to be the first player from Taiwan to win a major on the LPGA Tour? That's my dream before I come to LPGA. I say to Taiwan media, I say to everybody, I say I'm going to be your first one win a major in Taiwan. So I did it. <laughs> <laughs> she entered the championship at world number 25 and left as number six. Her 2008 season would be remarkable for any tour player, let alone a rookie. Following on from that maiden major victory, she would come close to another one at the Women's British Open, finishing second behind G.I. Shin at Sunningdale. What a part. What a round of golf she is putting together out in 34, a round of 66. A further four runner-up finishes peppered Seng's campaign and would lead to the LPGA Rookie of the Year award. She also peaked at world number two ahead of her idol, Annika Sorenstam. The world was getting used to Sang's characteristic smile and her success continued the following year. By March, Sang had become the fastest player in LPG history to reach the $2 million mark in career earnings. She achieved this in 32 events, spanning one year, one month, and 13 days. Her sole LPG Tour win that season came at the 2009 Corning Classic kind of shoves it, and then Yanni now knows that she's won. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've won. This year also saw Sang switch base from California to Florida. Some say don't meet your heroes, but no one has ever said don't buy their house. Sang did exactly that and moved into Sorenstam's old place in Lake Nona. Her single win saw Sang drop to world number five. Her next two seasons, however, were nothing short of sensational. With back-to-back third-place finishes to start the campaign, followed by wins in Thailand and Australia, all eyes were on the now 21-year-old as the first major approached, the Kraft Nabisco Championship. 
That's the kind of putt you want for a championship. What a performance in the final round. As the game's greats jostled for position at the top of the leaderboard, a pivotal eagle early in her final round ensured Sang posted to another victory and major number two. The only time Sang wasn't in control that week was when she took the famous leap into Poppy's Pond and immediately remembered she was unable to swim. Although she never really contended at the U.S. Women's Open and the Ladies PGA Championship, Sang was determined to close out the major season in style, as she traveled to Royal Birkdale to tee it up at the Women's British Open. Three impressive rounds of 68 saw her take a four-shot lead into the final day. This is what they say, they all practice this for the Open Champion, this to win, this for the big prize, well the moment is here to win three majors and be the youngest person to do so. Might be a tear, a tear or two in, in that shoulder. I'm not far away from what we saying. Such was her popularity, it was reported that the young star was offered a mouth-watering $25 million contract from an unnamed Chinese company. It included the use of private jets and a luxury villa in Beijing, with one unique caveat. They wanted her to become a Chinese citizen. Seng declined. Another trophy before the season's end capped an outstanding year as she claimed both the LPGA and the Golf Riders Association of America Player of the Year honors. Much like the previous year, 2011 started strongly successfully defending the Taifong Ladies Open in her native Taiwan before retaining her Australian Open title, where she blew the field away to win by seven shots. It seemed apt that a week later on Valentine's Day, the game she so dearly loved brought her the world number one spot. Four years after her professional debut, Yanni Tseng was now the best female golfer in the world. With Sang's ultimate career goal already achieved, would there be any let up? Well, in a word, no. Having won for the third time in a row in February, Sang had her eyes on more majors to fill up her growing trophy cabinet back in Florida. With a driving average of almost 270 yards, no one was able to keep up at the Wegmans LPJ Championship. By the close of play on Sunday, she had demolished the field at Locust Hill, winning by 10 shots. In runaway fashion, Yanni Tsen becomes the youngest woman ever to win four major championships. Now time for Carnoustie. Arriving as world number one and defending champion, Seng's game had reached new heights and she blew the field away, again. On the verge of her fifth major at the age of 22, breaking all the records, it's going to be her fourth major win in eight starts. She seems to cut above the rest, not doing a disservice to them, but, you know, every now and again, something special comes along. Woods did it in the men's game, she's going to do it in the women's game, no question about that whatsoever. I think I feel much comfortable this year better than last year because I kind of learning from a mistake and I've been through a whole year and then feel like this year my mental is getting mature and then I think I got a great attitude and I just feel really happy. Seng was now the youngest player, male or female, to win five major championships. And despite the comparisons, not even Tiger Woods could claim that honor. Seng's success and the growing influence of Asian golf laid the platform for the first LPGA event in Taiwan. If Yanni Mania wasn't in full flow before, it was now. The women's game had never seen anything like it. When a victorious Seng walked off the 18th green on Sunday, the roar of 20,000 fans followed her.
The pressure and expectation on the nation's sweetheart was intense and ultimately would play a part in her impending downfall. your seventh win on the LPGA this year. Do you want 2011 to ever end? Uh, no, I don't want to end. You know, we got a two more tournament. I wish we got more. I can win more too. 2011 truly was a year where being first was just the norm. 12 wins, first in scoring average, first in driving distance, first in rounds under par, first in the number of rounds in the 60s, and first on the money list. Such was her dominance, Time Magazine named her in their list of the 100 most influential people in the world. Whilst few could have predicted her meteoric rise, no one could have foreseen her rapid decline. Despite three wins at the beginning of 2012, by the summer, her game had collapsed. And the final member of this group, the world number one. But one has to say, the struggling world number one. You get the impression that Yanni has maybe struggled with her position as the world number one mentally. Just feeling that she's under pressure to perform week in, week out, which of course she, she has done for much of the last two years. It's a little disconcerting, Jane, when you play a golf course so well and then you have a day like this where you just can't find it. Yeah, she just hasn't had it all week. When Sang returned to Taiwan to defend the title she won so convincingly the year before, she was greeted with the same fanfare. She conjured a valiant defense but finished third. This prompted a, what happened, from a reporter as if third wasn't acceptable. Another top 10 soon after was greeted with a similar query. Why are you in a slump? The scrutiny comes with the territory, but Sang didn't know how to handle it. The young star was still world number one, but as the year ended, Sang had missed three cuts since June. She'd only missed two in total since she burst onto the scene in 2007. This was not a dip in form. It was a nosedive in the eyes of some. It's been a baffling year. What a, I mean, the, the, just a nightmare season for Yanni Sin. It's just amazing how she's gone from being the youngest player in the history of golf to win five majors and so dominant as the number one player to how far she's fallen since then. Sang showed a flicker of form with a pair of top three finishes to start her 2013 campaign. But that's all it was. Oh. Merely a flicker. <laughs> I was playing really good during practice rounds, but once it got to the tournament, I was losing control of my mind, my body, my swing. I don't trust as much. Sang would eventually lose her grip on the number one spot in early 2013, bringing an end to her incredible 109-week reign. Everyone in golf who has followed the LPGA Tour, Judy, is pulling for Yanni. This young woman can play golf. She's got emotional issues that are really stumbling blocks, and they've grown over the last couple of years, and she's going to have to erase some of that to get back to being a good competitive player. A break from the spotlight was needed. In 2019, Sang took a medical exemption and returned to her family in Taiwan, searching for the peace of mind that eluded her. A retreat to a Buddhist temple and a 10-day meditation was the solution. A mind that had chased past glory for so long received stillness and quiet. When Yanni returned to competitive golf, it had been 10 years since her historic trophy-laden season. Whilst the results were not what she wanted, she carried a renewed sense of calm. The demons that had plagued her were finally silent.
Despite flashes of her former brilliance, Seng was never able to recapture the magic of those early years. However, the legacy of her achievements endures and is the highest benchmark for which any young star will be measured.